Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Louis and Pickwick for our Sunday morning worship service. As the bulletin indicates, I'm Pastor Conrad uh, from Fountain City, and I'll be conducting your worship service this morning. We begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 363, the first of four verses. forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am in my nature sinful, and that I hesitate you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to that day when every creature in heaven and earth will acclaim you King of kings and Lord of lords to your unending praise and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. And for our Old Testament scripture reading this morning, we turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, reading verses 11 to 16 and 23 and 24. For this is what the Lord God says, Here I am. 
I myself will seek the welfare of my flock and will carefully search for them. As a shepherd searches for his flock and a sheep are with him that have been scattered, so I will search for my flock and rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of cloud and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own soil. I will shepherd them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys, and in all the settlements of the land. I will lead them into good pasture, and their grazing land will be on the high mountains of Israel. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will pasture on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will shepherd my flock. I myself will let them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strays. I will bring up, bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will shepherd them with justice. Then I will raise up over them one shepherd, and he will tend them. My servant David will tend them, and he will be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be, be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends our Old Testament scripture reading. We turn now to our psalm, Psalm 146. Pastor? Yes. Could we do Psalm 98 because that's what the pastor has up on the board? Well, oh. that, that's the only thing we have to see. Okay, sure. Sorry about that. Psalm 198. What? 98. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he, he has done marvelous things. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known. And revealed his righteousness to the nations. He, will, he has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Shout for the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the sound of singing. Shout for joy for the Lord, the King. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. And for our epistle reading, we turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading verses 20 to 28. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came by a man, the resurrection of the dead also is going to come by a man. For as in Adam all, they all die, so also in Christ they all will be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ as the first fruits, and then Christ's people at his coming. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father after he has done away with every other ruler and every other authority and power. For he mu uh, must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Death is the last enemy to be done away with. Certainly he has put all things in subjection under his feet. Now when it says that all things have been put in subjection, obviously that does not include the one who subjected all things to him. For when all things have been subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, in order that God may be all in all. Here ends our epistle reading. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Alleluia. We rise. In our gospel reading this morning, as we turn the gospel, St. Matthew chapter 27, reading verses 27 to 31. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, 
and gathered the whole cohort of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, knelt in front of him and mocked him by saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him, took the staff and hit him repeatedly on his head. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Here ends our gospel reading. We join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene, uh, the Apostles' Creed on page 19. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come up to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. From our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation this morning is recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew, our Gospel reading. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, uh, then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the Praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put his scarlet robe on him and then wove a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. 
This is the word of our Lord. And in Christ Jesus, our glorious Lord and Savior from sin, dear fellow Christians, it's not fair. It's just not fair. Have you ever heard a young child use those words? React that way when an older brother or a sister could go and do something and they couldn't. It's not fair. Why can they go and do it and go when I can't? Do we grow out of those words? Sad to say, I don't think so. There are still many things that happen that just don't seem fair. Two people that do the same thing wrong. One of them gets into trouble. The other one doesn't. Or one person wor works hard to try and make a good, honest living, and they have to struggle. The next person perhaps does it in a not so honest way, and everything seems to fall in their lap. It just doesn't seem fair. The same thing happened back in biblical times. We find the prophet Jeremiah and others periodically asking, why do the wicked prosper? Why do the, all the faithless live at ease? Why do they get away with the things they are doing? At the present time, we may only scratch our head in amazement to those questions. But let me assure you that the day is coming when justice will prevail. Justice will prevail because Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Justice will prevail because Jesus is the one who is going to judge all people. Jesus, as we know, was the eternal Son of God. Always has been, always will be. There never was a time when Jesus didn't exist. At the beginning of time, he teamed up with the Father and the Holy Spirit to create this whole wide universe of ours. As the eternal Son of God, he enjoyed hundreds, thousands of holy angels waiting on him and worshiping him in heaven. But then the time came when the eternal Son of God laid aside his full divine glory as a uh, for, uh, divine glory for a time. He didn't stop being true God. He just uh, didn't make use of his divine attributes. As we're told in the book of Philippians, he made himself nothing. He didn't parade the fact that he was the eternal son of God around in front of people. He didn't think that was necessary. As the passage goes on, he was made in human likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. You talk about something being unfair. There you have the epitome of it. Jesus is the King of Kings. He also was back then. Uh, while he was here on earth, even though he did not make full and complete use of his divine attributes, in addition, he was also a perfect man. He's the only human being who never sinned once. Never sinned once, not in word, not in actions, not even in thought. And yet that God-man, true God from all eternity and also true man born of the Virgin Mary, was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and familiar with suffering. It definitely doesn't seem fair. Listen again to what happened in front of Pontius Pilate. In the uh, governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, knelt in front of him and mocked him by saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him, took the staff and hit him repeatedly on the head. Sometimes when we think that things are happening in our life that are unfair, think of Jesus. They're nothing compared to what he, uh, happened to him. People should have been worshiping him. They humiliated him. They should have treated him like the king that he was. But they treated him like dirt. 
They should have um, been singing his praise. Instead, they hurled insults at him. Now, if you and I had been there, would we have joined in that pathetic behavior? Not only would we have, but we do every day, every time we sin. Because every single sin we commit is like another slap across Jesus' face. It's another welt added to his back. And this is true not only of the things that we do wrong or say wrong or think wrong. It is also true of the many things that God wants us to be doing, but that we aren't doing. God requires that we give a portion of what he gives to us back to him. But does what we give to him increase as he graciously gives more to us? We know what God expects of us in regard to parents and others in authority, be it teachers, employers, and yes, even government officials. But do we always show proper and honor and respect for them? Or are we more inclined to make fun of them, mimic them in a derogatory way, or even downgrade them with our jokes? Even though Jesus was the king of kings, the government soldiers took him and had fun with him. If you can say what they did was fun, if what they did to another human being was fun, and they probably did it even with smirks and smiles on their face as they mockingly said, Hail, King of the Jews! Was it fair? No, my friend, it wasn't fair, but it was prophetic. It would be hard pressed to find another example of pagan, pagan uh, mockery and that was more prophetic. They mockingly called Jesus a king. In reality, he was the king. The, he, the, he was the greatest and the best king ever. And he is going to see to it that justice does prevail. If not before. And you all know as well as I do is that when that justice will prevail. It will prevail when Jesus comes again to, on the last day, to judge the living and the dead. Yes, it's going to happen on Judgment Day. And who is going to be there? Everyone is going to be there. Every believer and every unbeliever. Those who are still living as well as those who have already died. Everyone is going to be gathered before uh, a judgment seat of Christ the King for judgment. And you can be sure that that kind of mocking and jesting will not be going on there. Because then everyone is going to recognize Jesus as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that he is. Can you imagine what's going to happen to those soldiers who took Jesus, mocked him, spit at him, crowned him with thorns, and then let led him away to crucify him when justice prevails? Do you think that they're still going to be taunting him? Do you think that they're still going to be ridiculing him? Do you think that there's no smiles and smirks are going to still, to still be on their faces as he sentenced them to eternal darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth? And what about others? Others who right now in the past or the present are doing things in open defiance of God's will? What about those who have smiles and smirks on their faces as they think they got away with something because mom or dad or a teacher or the police didn't catch them? Do you think they want smiles on their faces as Christ the King reveals all their sinful deeds and judges them on the basis of those deeds? What about those who are baptized? Confirmed are members of a, a Christian congregation, the whole 10 yards. But yet they still don't think it necessary to follow God, what God's word says. They don't bother to help others, which as Jesus says is also not helping him. They foolishly think that they can just keep right on indulging in some pet sin, even though God forbids such things. He condemns sinful thoughts, words, and deeds. 
Or do or they foolishly think that it isn't necessary to keep on feeding their soul with the precious word of God? They may be all smokes, uh, smiles and uh, smirks now as they thumb up their noses at God and his word. But will be, they be wearing those same smirks and smiles when Jesus returns and justice prevails? My friends, Jesus, uh, justice will prevail. No one is going to get away with anything. Even the wicked who seemingly right now are, are prospering at the expense of the righteous will receive the, their proper reward. Such individuals may seemingly even go to their, uh, to their grave in peace, but they're not going to be resting comfortably in, uh, in eternity. Uh, no one does who gets sent to the eternal fires and pains of hell. Justice is always going to prevail because Jesus is the, is the king of kings. He is the king of the entire universe. He is in charge of all things in heaven and on earth. And even the elections, which may or may not turn out the way we would like them to, he is in control. And he also has the ability to have some good come out of every situation so that no one will ever have to, will ever be found saying, it's not fair. Jesus is fair. He is also patient and loving, just. He became our wonderful Savior. When he came into this world to live a perfect life for us and die an innocent death for us, he is a king who conquers by allowing himself to be conquered. He wouldn't have had to allow all those smirks and smiles uh, to, uh, of the soldiers to take happen. He could have easily wiped them off their faces, but he didn't. For the, better, for the greater good. He endured all these things, even the agonies of crucifixion for you and for me. He did it to pay for our sins. He did it to wash us clean of every spot and stain in his blood. He did it to prepare a beautiful home in heaven that is waiting for all those who believe in him. He did it to demonstrate that justice does prevail. He did it to show that in the end, all things, even the worst kind of nightmares that we can imagine, still will work out together for the good of those who love him. We are still going to hear people complain, not fair. It's just not fair. At times we may even use those words ourselves. It may seem uh, they're going to then there, we are going to understand God's rationale perfectly as to why he allows certain things to happen. There we will have satisfactory answers to all the unanswered questions. There we'll be more confident than ever that Jesus, uh, justice does prevail. As we continue to live here on earth, it may seem at times like we are in the short end of things, that we, we are being used and abused taken advantage of, but don't sink to the same level of those who do such things, because justice will prevail. How can it not help but prevail when Jesus is the king? He, his is the name in which every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, whether, whether the people want to or not. Everyone in heaven and on earth and even under the earth will bow to him. Please join me in being eternally grateful that we don't have to do such things like others will do have to, whether they want to or not on the last day. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We don't have to do that. We want to do it. We gladly do it because we're more convinced than ever that Jesus is Lord. He is King and as our King Supreme, he will see to it that justice does prevail. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we pray to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. You are worthy, O Christ, our King, to receive honor and glory and praise. For you created all things, 
and by your will they were created and have their being. You are worthy because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased us for God. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have called us into your kingdom and made us priests to serve you, our God and Father. We give you thanks, O Christ, our shepherd king, because you have searched for us and found us. Lead us to the green pastures and quiet waters of your saving love, so that we may enjoy peace and comfort for our soul. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. Come with your mighty power to break and defeat every evil plan and purpose of the devil, of the ungodly influence and ideas of the world, and of our own sinful nature. Use your power to calm the unrest among the nations and peoples so that your kingdom may spread and grow. Reign in our hearts that we may serve you more faithfully and speak more boldly to others of your saving love. When you return, every eye will see you and every knee will bow to you. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. King of kings and Lord of lords, your people rejoice to be a part of your eternal kingdom. And we also pray on behalf of our elected officials. Lord God, ruler of all things, we commend our nations and its elected leaders to your care. Bless our new president, the members of Congress and the House of Representatives, and all officials who serve us in state, county, and local government. And impress on all who are in authority the sacredness of the responsibility you have placed on them. Give them the gifts required for leadership, wisdom to make laws that will bring order and justice to our society, and compassion for the downtrodden and the poor. Purge our land of dishonesty and corruption in government. You just to honor all civil authorities as your representatives. Through stable government, provide throughout our land an atmosphere in which you, uh, your, which, in which your church can do its work in peace. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. You may be seated, I think. You may be seated. For the verse 4, the final, uh, final hymn. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you this morning with the word. 
I don't think there are any announcements that I was supposed to make. My other sheet is in the, my briefcase, but have a good day. Yes. I just wanted to apologize that uh, our order of service was all off for everything today. Um, between three pastors, two services, and a quick